Vai! Santa! Oh, ce uibau! Da, vai, Santa! Drge, 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 drge! The security service of Ukraine, SBU, has claimed responsibility for an explosion that seriously injured the head of customs of the so-called Luhansk People's Republic, Kiev Post has been told. The special operation targeted Yuri Afanasievsky in his own apartment. As a result, he reportedly received multiple shrapnel wounds to the head, neck, and abdomen, and is said to be in intensive care in critical condition. An SBU source told Kiev Post Afanasievsky was put in place as a Russian proxy with the rank of Major General and acts an agent for the central apparatus of Moscow's Federal Security Service, FSB. In this role, he is known for both being the main financier of the chairman of the so-called LPR Leonid Pasichnik and for using laundered money to fund paramilitary groups fighting against Ukraine, the source said. The SBU contact, using military terminology, expressed the hope that, in the near future, his status will change from Cargo 300, which mean wounded casualty, to Cargo 200, which is fatal casualty. Afanasievsky is the subject of personal sanctions imposed by the EU, UK, Canada, Switzerland, and Japan. Ukraine appears to have lost its first British-supplied Challenger 2 tank after video surfaced on social media early on Tuesday morning of one of the vehicles burning at the side of the road, believed to be south of the recently liberated town of Robotyne. It was not clear how the British tank was destroyed. Video reviewed by Kiev Post analysts suggested the Challenger 2 was in an area that had been subjected to active artillery fire. A stationary Ukrainian T-64 tank, some 50, 60 meters away, had evidence of shell splinter damage in its side armor. President Zelensky visited troops leading a counteroffensive towards the eastern war-battered town of Bakhmut. As part of a working trip to Donetsk region, the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, visited combat brigades conducting offensive operations in the Bakhmut region, the presidency said. It added that Zelensky had listened to reports on the operational situation on the eastern front. Ukraine has not seen any evidence that Russian forces are taking steps to prepare for winter. Natalia Humenyuk, head of the Joint Coordination Press Center of the Southern Defense Forces, said on Tuesday. Perhaps because their logistics are complicated, she said, adding, they barely have time to meet their current needs for ammunition, protective equipment, and to bring in some new units of equipment to replace damaged or destroyed ones. That is why we have not seen such a massive procurement of winterization supplies. According to the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, defending troops held off Russian attacks near Bakhmut in a total of 22 combat clashes there on Monday. The General Staff reported a total of 13 Ukrainian airstrikes on Russian positions, 11 on troops and weapons clusters, and 2 on anti-aircraft missile systems. Meanwhile, Ukraine defense officials reported 5 Russian missile attacks and 68 airstrikes that same day as well as 42 attacks involving multiple rocket launchers. Artillery was primarily aimed at 15 settlements in the northern portions of the Donetsk region, including Ivanivske, Bodanivka, Chasivyar, and Bilahora. Ukrainian forces made tactically significant advances in the western Zaporizhia region on Monday, according to the Institute for the Study of War. The ISW geolocated footage published on September 4th showing Ukrainian forces advancing south of Robotyne, 9 kilometers south of Orykiv, and west of Verbov, 18 kilometers southeast of Orykiv. Ukrainian Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Maliar reported that Ukrainian forces continue offensive operations in the Melitopol area and achieved unspecified successes in the direction of Novodanilivka, 5 kilometers south of Orykiv and Novoprokopivka, 13 kilometers south of Orykiv. She said that overall, Ukrainian troops have recaptured approximately three square kilometers of land in that area over the past week.
according to a post from the publicly funded Ukraine Media Center. Over the past week, the following were eliminated. Personnel, 3,810, nearly eight battalions. Tanks, 80, about three tank battalions. Armored combat vehicles, 101, about three motorized rifle battalions. Artillery units, 186, around 10 artillery divisions. Missiles, 322. Kyiv has drafted a law aimed at closing a loophole that a significant number of individuals had been using to avoid being conscripted into Ukraine's armed forces. Under current legislation, men aged 18, 60 are exempt from being mobilized if they are students enrolled on a higher education course. The new law seeks to limit this so that it would only apply to those aged over 30 as a large increase in the number of older male students since the start of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine suggests it was being used to avoid conscription. From 2019 to 2021, around 40,000 male students in Ukraine were aged over 25. After February 2022, this number jumped to 106,000. Russian claims that it thwarted an attack by Ukrainian intelligence operatives has been mocked by the Russian Volunteer Corps, which not only took credit for the attack, but claimed it had resulted in the deaths of two FSB border guards. A bomb went off outside a military enlistment office in St. Petersburg, the local news website Fontanka reported Tuesday, citing eyewitnesses. Local residents reported hearing sounds of explosions near the enlistment office around noon on Tuesday. Authorities cordoned off a nearby abandoned bomb shelter, which Fontanka said sustained minor damage. Investigators believe the explosion occurred inside a shaft that leads to an abandoned bomb shelter, some 20 meters from the military recruitment office, according to Fontanka. The outlet described the explosive device as a battery-powered radio module fitted with 100, 150 grams of gunpowder. Security camera footage shared by Fontanka showed police tape surrounding a pockmarked road in the courtyard of an old building. It was unclear if the asphalt shown in the footage was damaged as a result of the reported blast. The outlet said there were no injuries. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.